on the chat box. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sure it's a lovely afternoon where we are. Um, I, I don't know if I'm audible and and if you can hear me, um, you can hear me. Please can you give a thumbs up in the chat box? So I'm, I'm communicating on two um two for uh, this afternoon. Um, I hope we're doing great. So I hope it's been a lovely um day so far. My name is Dr. Yuande Abishida. I'm the head of the wellness department in Dutchess International Hospital. Um, this afternoon, I'll be talking to us, sharing some tips on um, healthy habits and also lifestyle management. Um, I can see that we have some of our clients present. Um, just to get to know us a bit, just to break the ice a bit, um, can we comment in the different chat boxes? Can we comment where we are watching live from? I know some people are watching us from London, from Lagos, from Abuja. Can we comment in the chat box where we are watching from? Um, here in Lagos, Nigeria, Ikeja to be precise. That's wonderful. So I can see from Lagos, Lagos. Oh, wow. I, I can see that we have someone from London. So we're truly an international hospital. Um, any other places? Lagos, London. And oh wow, England. Wow, that's that is wonderful. That is wonderful. And anybody from America, Saudi Arabia? Anybody from India? Anybody from the Middle East? Oh wow, wow. That is so wonderful. So thank you so much, um, everyone, for taking our time to be here for this meeting. Um, I can see that we have a, a large number of participants coming in from Lagos, then we also have another. Um, participants coming in from London and also from America as well. You are very much welcome today. Um, I'll be speaking about healthy habits and lifestyle management, but I'd want to encourage every single participant to listen closely. Um, towards the end of the presentation, there'll be some questions um, asked um, or a particular question asked. So I'd want us to pay attention to all the slides. Um, the question could be on anything. It could be on the phone number to reach in case you want to book a health check at Dutchess Hospital. It could be on anything. And whoever wins the um, gets the question, that's its fastest finger first. The first person to get the question stands a chance of winning a free health check at Dutchess International Hospital. I'm sure we're excited. All right, so we're we'll moving on. So today we'll be talking about um, healthy habits and lifestyle management. Um, I'm glad to be here this afternoon to talk to us and give us steps on how to be healthier and also how to live a healthier life as well. So what is health and lifestyle management? Um, I'm sure a lot of us would have seen a, a lot of, especially nowadays, you tend to have um, a, a lot of wellness and different dietary changes and so many people doing so many things, um, changing their diets, um, changing their lifestyles and so many facts. So we'll be talking today, delving more into that and delving into the key things that we need to know and the key things that we need to take. So what is health? So WHO has a definition for health in which it says that health is a state of physical and mental well-being free from disease. And lifestyle management, it's actually managing your health care. It's about developing realistic actions to prevent illness, promote self-care, and increase healthy behaviors. So we'll be talking about these two today. Right. So why are healthy habits and lifestyle management? Why, why is it important? I, I, I'm sure some of us will be wondering why do doctors talk about lifestyle management, especially for um, some of our clients that might um, have chronic illnesses or for some of our clients that might just be the worried well. Why do doctors talk about lifestyle management? Well, we talk about lifestyle management because we know that having healthy habits would lead to improved physical health. 
Um, it could also lead to increasing um, support for mental and emotional well-being. What we've found over the years, and science has has proved this over the years, the more healthy you are, the more um, healthy habits you um, follow day in and day out, and the more um, you manage your lifestyle, the better the chances of being mentally and physica physically healthy you'll be. Then also lifestyle man management is important for boosting energy and productivity. For those of us that exercise, I know a lot of our clients tend to exercise and are quite active. There's this increase in energy that it gives and it doesn't just give that increase in energy, it also leads to increased productivity during the day. There's um, more energy to handle life's tasks and also um, to handle the day-to-day -day activities as well. So it also leads to better sleep quality, enhances cognitive function, um, also leads to resilience to stress, then also boosts confidence and self-esteem as well. And I, I hope we're getting something so far. I hope I'm not too fast. <laughs> Okay, so I've highlighted this um, to talk about why health and lifestyle management is important. Um, I'm sure a lot of us will note that the healthcare industry or healthcare is not the same as it was about 10 years ago. Then also um, the economy is not the same as it was 10 years ago. We had uh, this wonderful thing that happened about um, four years ago when COVID started and that led to a disruption in so many things globally, it led to disruptions in global supply chains. It also led to um, disruptions in um, global healthcare management as well. So one of the reasons why we want to talk about this is that health and lifestyle is, management is important because it helps maintain an optimal level of wellness, absolutely crucial to living a high quality life especially with failing health systems, unsustainable economic cost of the healthcare organization, middle-class growth, pollution and environmental degradation. So there's this wonderful slide um, called the Blue Zone slide. Um, so I'll be talking just briefly on the Blue Zones. There's a particular, um, a particular research that, that started, it first started in the 90s, then it was completed by a researcher called Dan Butner. He's also an author of, of the book, The Blue Zones. So he started, um, completed the research in 2005. So he wanted to look at what was the reason behind uh, a, a lot of populations having people who are much, much older between the ages of 80 and 90. So he wanted to do some research and find out what exactly could be the cause. And I'll be talking to you mostly today about um, the blue zones, um, particular key components of the blue zones and the things that we need to do. Um, over the years, over thousands of years and thousands of millennia, you've had uh, a lot of researchers trying to find out what the fountain of youth is. Um, you've had um, so many stories and myths about rivers and fountains in which um, you can bath in and you'd end up being 20 years younger and end up being 10 years younger. But today I'm going to speak to us on what the practical fountain of youth is. We don't need to go to one um, mountain and do some um, David Livingstone explorations looking for the fountain of youth. These are key steps that we can take that would ensure that we are perpetually youthful. And not just perpetually, perpetually youthful in the mind, but also youthful in the body as well. So for the five key areas, um, Dan Butner discovered five key areas in which um, patients were above the age of 80 and above the age of 90. So they had a high population of old people here. The lifestyle expectancy in Nigeria is about 55.4 years. So you can understand how important it was to find these areas where you have people in their 80s and 90s. So they tried to find the key things that drew these people together. And they found out in some certain areas like California and Malinda, they found out that they were religious, that they did not take alcohol, they did not smoke cigarettes, and they lived 10 years longer than their North American counterparts. So they also found another place in Japan, and they saw that um, the Okinawans in Japan maintained social interactions, and they also took a few moments each day to remember their ancestors. Then they got to Costa Rica, and they also tried to find out why they are youthful as well. They tend to exercise a lot. They also tend to maintain key social interactions as well. 
Then um, in Italy, then also in Greece, they discovered they had, um, especially in Greece, the lowest rates of dementia. And that was as a result of diet and lifestyle. So this lays emphasis on why lifestyle management is important and why it's something that we should be able to do. So I'll be discussing the key areas on how we can keep healthy and how we can have the perpetual fountain of youth in our backyards. <laughs> All right, so the key areas to focus on, and it's quite simple, because I know that a lot of us would have heard about these over and over and over again. So I'm just going to emphasize and talk about this, um, these key areas over and over again, and I'll try to make it as simple as possible so that we can take this and um, be practical towards um, healthy habits, towards maintaining healthy habits and lifestyle management. So the key areas to focus on are just six key areas, nutrition, physical activity, stress management. I'm sure <laughs> this particular area will be very important for a lot of us that live in Lagos or live in London as well, <laughs> that tend to live in um, areas where it's stress, stress on the go, on the go. So I'm sure a lot of us will be paying key um, attention when we get to the stress management part. And then another part is quality sleep. Um, social connections, then routine health checks, routine health checks. So that's important. So we're moving to the first area, which is nutrition. So I know a lot of us would have heard doctors talk about eat a balanced diet, eat a balanced diet. Then we've probably heard had a, a dietitian try to try to beat us into place or beat us into subjection by um, creating a meal plan for us. So I want to emphasize again on the importance of diet. We should make good nutrition a priority, and we should try as much as possible to avoid crash diets. I know that for a lot of us that are living in metropolitan cities, living in Lagos, living in um, London, and living in the US as well, we tend to be on the go, on the go, going after this and going after that. And we tend to possibly have crash diets or have our meals on the go. But I'd like to re-emphasize the importance of good nutrition and the benefits of good nutrition um, it helps, especially uh, for diet. Um, what we usually advise for our adults is that they should have at least five fruits a day. So incorporate fruits and vegetables in your diet, at least five fruits, servings of fruits a day. And what this does is that it helps prevent cardiovascular disease. It also helps prevent diabetes, and it can also help prevent some cancers as well. It also helps with overall health and also gut health as well. They should also ensure you keep hydrated with at least three liters of water a day. So I'm sure some of our clients that have done health checks with us would have seen a particular point where we told them, okay, you're doing great, but then um, for your kidney or to preserve kidney function, you might need to increase, increase your fluid intake. And that's just how important water is. It helps not just metabolism in the body, it also helps maintain your organs, especially the kidneys as well. So nutrition. We also have a di dietitian in-house. In case you're struggling with your nutrition and you don't know what to take, what, should be, uh, what do I do? Should I go for the keto diet? Or should I go for the Atkins diet? Or should I go for the latest fat diet? Um, we'll be happy to have our dietitian in-house see you. Um, we'll be happy to assist you booking an appointment and a personalized meal plan to address your dietary needs. Okay, so this is Duchess Hospital. I just want us to gaze on the awesomeness of Dutchess Hospital before we move to the next slide. All right. Okay, then exercise, exercise, exercise. Um, I'm smiling when I read this slide because a lot of times you tend to have a lot of patients that come in and you tell them that, okay, that um, I just need you to exercise, especially those who might be pre-diabetic or those who might be pre-hypertensive or those who might be diabetic and hypertensive. For a lot, a lot of them, the huge difference is in just exercising, exercising. We've been doing health checks in Dutchess Hospital for the past three years, over three years now, doing health checks in Dutchess Hospital. And the beauty is being able to see our patients from the previous year, then see them the next year and see the improvements that they've been able to make. So for our patients that take intentional steps in exercising, we're able to follow them over time and see the benefits in terms of their cholesterol control, their blood sugar control, and in terms of their overall health as well. So WHO um, 
recommends that adults should have at least 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity exercise. 150 minutes, just a, a week of moderate intensity exercise, then vigorous exercise, 75 minutes a week. And this tends to go a long way, the benefits of exercise. We found out that scientists have found out that for exercise, it tends to delay old, um, delay aging. You can see the difference between uh, clients who've been exercising. I have some clients that are in their 80s and you will not believe it. And that's as a result of years of consistent physical activity, years of consistent exercise. What physical activity does is that it improves the mood, it enhances concentration, reduces feelings of anxiety and depression. Then it also improves um, co cognition as well. For some clients, that um, what we found over time, well, I read a research recently, I think it was done in about 2009, in which um, exercise cut down 45% the risk of having Alzheimer's. That's the risk of having dementia, a type of dementia. So it was that important that it, it cut it down to about 45%. So even if you have only time for 30 minutes of exercise every other day, a lifelong habit of regular activity benefits your heart helps you stay on top of your weight and stress levels. Then it also gives you a youthful appearance as well. Um, I've, I remember going, I used to be the official or unofficial tour guide of Duchess Hospital. So I remember going on a walk with a particular client and I talked, we're talking for a really long time. And at the end of the walk, she said that, can you guess my age? And I thought, okay, maybe you must be your thirties, maybe maximum 35. And she said she was 55, but I almost passed out in shock. <laughs> so I had to ask, what is your secret? And she said, exercise, regular physical activity. She started from age 30 and she was able to build it up. I know that living in a stressful city like Lagos, it can be a bit difficult, but we could try exercising here and there. Don't sit around too much. Um, try to walk around instead of the lift, take the stairs. I do know we have that policy in Duchess Hospital where staff take the stairs. And it goes a long way in preventing cardiovascular disease, diabetes, a lot of these could be prevented by exercise. Imagine the amount of money that's spent on these, um, these ailments. Then now imagine how exercise is. Exercise is cheap. It is free and it can go a long way in ensuring that you are healthy. Then stress management. <laughs> so I'm, I'm laughing at this point because I know that a lot of us, especially some of us that are in Lagos, then I'll, I'll say London because it's almost the same in terms of stress. So I, I know a lot of us will be going through stress, um, trying to go around, um, trying to go around, around to make a living. Then especially for some of our clients as well that are heads of organizations that are chief executive um, officers. <laughs> you know, they say on easy lies the head that wears the crown. So stress management is very important. I've had the opportunity of working in um, corporate sections or a corporate area before I came and you could literally see some of the clients over the years and see that how they, over the years, developed high blood pressure and also developed diabetes as well as a result of the stress levels that they were under. So you could see a client in a particular year that, okay, his blood pressures were normal, but then he's maybe in, um, promoted to uh, from middle management level to top management level and you see the blood pressure starts going up as well. So it's important that we manage stress. And how do we manage stress so that it doesn't um, lead to ailments and lead to cardiovascular disease and other things. We should set goals and priorities. The truth is it can't be everywhere at once. You can't be everywhere at once. And you should be also able to, apart from setting goals and priorities, determine what needs to be accomplished and what can wait. You could also put technology to good use as well, just like um, putting technology to good use today. So I'm not physically in your homes or in your offices, but I'm speaking um, virtually today. Then you should also learn to speak out if you're feeling overwhelmed. We are not um, superheroes, so not Captain America or, or Spider-Man. So learn to speak out if you're feeling overwhelmed. Then also identify stressors. For some people, the stressor could be the news. <laughs> um, the stressor could be people. The stressor could identify stressors and try to eliminate them if you can. Then employ relaxation techniques. Um, for some of us, um, we tend to relax with music, 
Um, it could be with a, a chilled drink, it could be with pounded jam, anything that, that makes the heart go light. Then it could also be with meditation, it could be with music, it could be with anything, and learn to say no. I know this could be quite difficult, especially in this part of the world, um, where because of cultural barriers, but learn to say no. If you're handling too much, learn to say no. All right, so we'll move to the next point. Then sleep. Hmm. So I'm going to emphasize on sleep, especially for my um, Lagos brethren <laughs> or my Lagos people that are part of the meeting today. I, I know that some of these things might seem as if they are basic, but then it's the basic things that even matter the most. The importance of sleep cannot be overemphasized. You should get enough rest. Sleep can help reduce the effect of stress. And if you notice at any point in time that you're having chronic difficulties with sleeping, please see a specialist. Because I know that a lot of us tend to, when we're having sleep difficulties, the next thing is to pop um, Lexotan, to pop a sleeping tablet. But that might not be the underlying cause for the sleeplessness. For some, it could be anxiety, it could be depression, it could be the medication that you're on. It could also be lifestyle habits as well, alcohol and caffeine. They tend to um, affect the level of sleep that we have. So please see a doctor or see anybody if you're having chronic sleep difficulties. Then employ sleep hygiene techniques. I like this point especially, especially for our patients that come in with chronic insomnia, because we tend to ask them that, okay, um, have you heard about sleep hygiene techniques? So I like that point where they're like, ah, sleep hygiene, that does sleep have hygiene again, they start explaining. So sleep hygiene techniques are science-backed techniques that help improve the quality of sleep. And when practiced over time, could really, really help with insomnia. Um, some of them involve sleeping at a particular time of the day, um, drawing the blinds, um, not eating late night meals as well, exercising during the day and some other things. So if you um, put your, um, if you'd want us to talk more about sleep hygiene and if you're having difficulties with sleep, please ensure that you put down our email address at the end of the presentation. We'll be happy to help with your um, sleep concerns. This is the part where I'm sure a lot of Nigerians would like connect socially. So remember earlier that I shared a slide, a particular slide that showed the five five blue zones in the world where people were, where they found people to, where, where they found to have a much more aged population. So a lot of them were found to be between that um, age 80 and 90. And one of the key factors that they found is that they connect socially, they connect socially. So connecting socially as well could also help in the long term with ensuring that you're healthy, not just healthy physically, but also healthy mentally as well. I know it could be different nowadays, and especially with technology, a lot of us are tempted to, okay, let me just leave my connection on WhatsApp and leave it at that, or let me leave my connection on Microsoft Teams or my connection on Microsoft um, on Zoom and leave it at that. But we need to connect physically. Um, I saw a particular research that said she connects with someone at least once a week at least once a week, try to connect. And how you try to connect, how often we socialize is also important. Even a brief interaction might make a difference in how you feel. That the quality of relationships you do develop with people can make a difference. But as much as we're connecting, it's also best to avoid toxic relationships or those that violate your personal boundaries. So I hope we're enjoying um, ourselves so far. This is a particular site where I am permitted to spend my time and 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 dwell there <laughs> because this is our area of expertise. So regular health checks are important. I cannot stress and overstress the importance of regular health checks. It's just like having a car. A lot of us tend to treat our cars far better than we treat our bodies. We take our cars for tune-ups, and when we hear a particular sound in the car, we just call our mechanic, we just call Ade, 
that this car is not sounding the way it should I'm getting crackers are moving. Or this, this indicator is showing that I have engine problems or engine difficulties. So we tend to do that for our cars and we do not do that for our bodies. We tend to have a lot of our clients come in and they say that, oh, I don't go to the hospital. There's no need to go to the hospital. I'm not sick. But they don't do that for their cars. They service their cars, have the engines changed, engine oil changed, have the fan belts changed, have the tire change when necessary. So the same energy that we give to changing our cars, to servicing our cars, is the same that we should give to servicing our bodies. We should ensure that we have regular annual medical checkups. Regular annual medical checkups. And I recommend that you see a wellness doctor. So it's not just a regular um, checkup in which you just go to a particular um, center, um, maybe diagnostic center, just have some tests done and say, okay, I've done it and not follow up. It's usually better if you see a wellness doctor like me. So what we usually do is that for our clients, we tend to watch them over time. So when they come in for their health checks, we're able to follow up with their health over the years because we have their health records we know their medical history. We know the, the places and the key areas that we're supposed to focus on. And not only do we know that, we're also able to prevent certain ailments from either developing or prevent um, certain ailments from getting worse. So an expert in the wellness clinic will check on you and ensure that you are in good health. If there are any problems, the doctor can spot the symptoms early and give you the medical care you need to ensure that you can embrace everything a wellness lifestyle can provide. I'd like to emphasize more on spotting the symptoms early. Um, a, a lot of the things that, um, if we look at the top five um, killers of a lot of um, people in West Africa or Nigeria, a lot of them are preventable. So we look at cardiovascular disease. Um, okay, we have all those diarrhea illnesses and some other things as well. Then you also look at uh, cancers, cancers as well. These things are preventable and you can find them, spot the symptoms early by regular annual medical checkups. We've had um, over 2,000 clients so far, over 2,000 clients so far, 2,500 clients so far. And we've been able to see the importance of regular annual checkups in these clients. We've had um, cancers picked up and all of them have been picked up in their early stages and all have had treatment done and all are alive and well. It's, they usually say that prevention is better than cure and a stitch in time saves mine. It's usually cheaper to go for an annual medical checkup than to actually treat a, a disease or a condition. It's usually cheaper that way. So what should you expect during your health check? Because I, I, I know sometimes, um, what should you expect during your health check? So I know sometimes with a lot of um, our clients, they wonder that what is a wellness visit? What should I do? What, what am I supposed to do there? So wellness visits basically provide your doctor with a status update on your overall health. They help guide you on the choices you can make to promote better health and they can catch health problems early. What we tend to do at Dutchess Hospital is to have a top to bottom approach. So in this top to bottom approach, you don't just look at, you just do some tests here, just do those tests and we just find out these things. We tend to have, we have um, different packages and it's not just a one size or fit all package or a factory lined package. They're usually picked based on the person's lifestyle, based on their age and also based on their underlying medical history as well. So that that would now guide us on the steps that we can take to ensure that they are healthy, not just at that point, but they continue to be healthy. So these physical um, visits usually include a physical examination. So like I said earlier, top to bottom approach. So that involves visual assessments, hearing assessments, hear, nose and throat assessments, also a dental assessment and a physical examination for, for a doctor. We've had a lot of patients who say that, oh, I'm healthy. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't need to see a doctor. Then you end up seeing the patient. You ask a few questions. I'm quite all right. They seem healthy just for you to get to a physical examination and you notice that, oh, I can hear a murmur or something in your chest. I suspect that you have valvular heart disease. Has anybody told you this before? Then they say, ah, oh, nobody has told me this. Then they end up seeing the cardiologist and end up having that checked out. 
Or it could also be for visual assessment. You could have um, those that, oh, I don't feel anything. Then they end up finding out that maybe they have glaucoma. And we can then address that and prevent blindness and prevent the complications as well. So it also involves examination of personal and family medical histories. At, at this point, it seems as if the doctor is trying to probe and find out too many questions. Why does the doctor need to know if I smoke cigarettes or, or if I take alcohol? Or why does the doctor need to know about the histories of my parents? It's usually, usually very important in trying to trace back and find out if there are possibly in, possible ailments that could be hereditary. We also discuss current lifestyle and health choices. So for our clients who uh, maybe are taking beyond a certain limit of alcohol or those who have certain habits, we discuss that with them and how they can live healthier. Then we also do screenings as well. So it's actually supposed to be cancer screenings. So um, there are some certain cancer screenings that you should have done. For instance, for males above the age of 40, they should have your prostate checked, especially in this part of the world. Then we do cancer screenings for cervical cancer. That's from the age of um, 21 to the age of 65, where we do um, test that screen for those um, screen, not just for cervical cancer itself, but also precancerous lesions. We also do screenings for colon cancer as well with um, specialized tests such as the FIT and colonoscopy as well. So I'd be happy to speak to any one of us that's interested about that. We also establish a plan for your health. At the end of the health check, you usually have um, medical reports, what we term a wellness report. And it has an outlined plan at the end with recommendations from the chief consultant that goes over the test results and gives his um, advice. So that usually outlines what are the next steps to take. Um, do you need to maybe to reduce your uric acid level? Should you avoid shaki and, <laughs> and liver and, and organ meats? Or do you need to go on a carbohydrate restricted diet? Or do you need to exercise more? Do you need to lose weight? Do you need to stop smoking? Or do you need to come back for a follow up test? So we usually do that and establish a plan for your health. So I'm going to um, smash some barriers to health check next, because I know that a lot of us, it tends to be a barrier to coming in for a health check. A lot of us will say so many things, oh, I, I, I don't have enough money. But I usually ask people to pick up their phone, <laughs> check the value of their phone, then check online for uh, um, then check online as well for, for a health check price you'll find that the health check plan that you say you don't have enough money for is not as expensive as your phone in most cases. So that barrier for financial constraints. A lot of people, when they come down, they end up finding that, oh, it's not as expensive as I thought. It's even way cheaper than I thought. Then when you look at the long-term benefits, for instance, um, a phone will be with you for, uh, it, it depends on the person, but there's some people that change their phones every year, change their phones every two years, but your body will be with you for the rest of your life. Shouldn't you then now take more or invest more in your body? Then another one is access and transportation. So for some of our clients, um, pre-COVID and um, that is to travel abroad. One of the beauties of Dutchess International Hospital is that it's in Ikeja, Lagos. So there's improved access to healthcare for our clients with um, top of the range facilities as well. Then cultural and language differences. Um, some might say that, oh, when I get there, they won't understand my language. We've had a lot of clients coming in from different parts of the country. We've had clients coming in from the north, Clients coming in for so many parts. We've had clients from Kano, Kaduna. We've had clients coming in from Asia, clients coming in from abroad as well. So I can assure you that cultural language barriers will not be here. Lack of awareness. So I'm glad that we're here today. So at least we've spoken about some things. So I hope that we'll be encouraged to um, pursue um, lifestyle management. Then fear and anxiety. Some people will say that, oh, that what if I discover this? What if I discover that, that I don't want to go, I'm afraid to go. But some of these things is usually pre preferable or usually better if you discover them early so that you can um, nip, them, nip them in the bud. Then time constraints. Some say I don't have time and, and all of that, but I just want to say make time, <laughs> make, make time, make time. We tend to make time for other things and tend to neglect our health. So let's be more intentional. Then provider availability, touches is available for your needs. Lack of referral or follow-up. Um, this doesn't really mostly happen with us because we're a multi-specialty environment. 
So one of the things here, and it's the beauty of this. So it's not just a place where you just do your health test. Nobody follows up. Nobody cares if you go to the cardiologist. Nobody go, cares if you go to the endocrinologist. We tend to refer our clients. And that um, refer could either be initial at onset. There might be some that might need to see a specialist that's based on their initial assessment. Or it could be afterwards. And it's based on their needs. So we're not just going to send you to for our females to a gynae because or you're female, therefore go to a gynae. No, it will be tailored to your needs. Then barriers to age, in age. Some might think that oh, we've had clients as young as, I think our youngest client was 15 and our oldest client was 90. <laughs> 90. So there are no barriers in age in terms of um, getting health checks and in terms of making sure that everything is fine. All right, so I've spent a lot of time on health checks <laughs> deliberately because that's our specialty. So number seven, um, this is the last, um, this is the last one we'll be talking about. This is the last, last one we'll be talking about. This is the last one we'll be talking about. So I'll just try to breeze through this. Avoid unhealthy habits. I know that it might seem basic, but some of these unhealthy habits, they, time, they tend to cut one's life short. So I'm sure I deliberately use that picture of your life, then use a picture of the cigarettes as well, just to show how unhealthy habits can have a significant negative impact on both physical and mental health well-being. So some of the common unhealthy habits that could either shorten lifespan or could either lead over time to poor quality of life are uh, having a poor diet, sedentary lifestyle, not a poor diet, it could lead to developing cardiovascular disease, developing diabetes as well. Then also some cancers, especially colon cancer. There's some cancers that um, links to having a poor diet. Then sedentary lifestyle, not exercising enough could lead to um, cardiovascular disease. It could also lead to some cancer. There are some certain cancers that are related to obesity, such as um, endometrial cancer, then um, colon cancer as well. They're not sleeping enough, then smoking. Then apart from smoking as well, there's, there's a new fad that you see nowadays, um, substance use as well, that should have been added to the slide. That is an unhealthy habit that would cut down um, one's lifespan. Excessive alcohol consumption, this tends to affect the liver. Then um, chronic stress. Okay. So now that we've learned um, the different um, key areas that we should focus on in maintaining our health, um, we'll be talking about the common mistakes in maintaining healthy habits. Because you tend to um, see a lot of people that come in and they say, okay, I'm healthy, and they show you the most, um, they, they, they show you something that ends up being an error or a mistake. So one of them, a common mistake is extreme diets, avoid being overly restrictive and avoid balanced diet. I, I think a lot of our diabetic patients tend to do that. So they'll say, because they are diabetic, therefore I should restrict myself to plantain and, and moe moe. And that tends to be quite restrictive because they're not getting the nutrients that they're supposed to get. Insufficient physical activity and prolonged sitting, lack of sleep, neglecting health checkups. I cannot overemphasize this. You should be regular with your health evaluations. That's with your annual health evaluations. All right. So what are the practical tips for maintaining healthy habits? For some of us that are, that are wondering, how do I start? Plan. It first starts with a plan. Create a healthy meal plan to avoid poor eating habits. We'd also be happy to assist you with our in-house dietitian. She could also help with creating a personalized meal plan that would address your needs. Set goals. And when setting the goals, set smart goals. So you should establish realistic and measurable fitness goals. Seek support, join a fitness group or get support from family. Stay consistent. Consistency in diet and exercise is the key to success. Um, I, I saw somewhere that habits uh, can be formed after maintaining a particular routine for about 21 days. So it takes just about three weeks for a habit to form. To form. And these habits are habits that would help in the long term. So it's not just helping for the time being, but helping in the long term as well. And the thing about maintaining good habits is that they are transgenerational. So it's not just for me, myself, and I. It tends to affect the generations afterwards. So if um, parents are eating healthy, children eat healthy. If parents are active, don't have cardiovascular disease, uh, children are active as well. 
So what are the next steps? Create a plan, monitor the progress of the plan, track your progress and adjust your plan as needed. So if you've been walking and you find out that, okay, um, I, I, um, I do better walking during the evenings and adjust it during the evenings. It doesn't have to be a one size fits all plan. If you're better with dancing like me, <laughs> And then have a dance fitness plan. You don't have to walk. Just anything that ensures that you're regular with your physical activity. Then start gradually. I've had a lot of people say that um, trying to start marathons. Okay, maybe if I start from here, it's easier to start gradually. Take small steps to improve healthy habits. Then seek support. So we're here to help you seek support from health professionals or fitness communities. So thank you very much. So I'll just be showing you, this is a slide picture of a wonderful Duchess International Hospital. So we're glad to serve your health needs, whether it's uh, for a wellness plan, a wellness check, a health fitness plan, or whether you want to see our specialists. We are committed to delivering excellent service in the medical field with all departments supported by latest technology and state-of-the-art medical equipment. So I'm just sharing this Duchess International Hospital in pictures because I'm sure some of us will be wondering uh, what does it look like um, in that um, hospital that looks like a hotel. <laughs> so these are just some of our top of the range facilities from our laboratory to our um, kitchen area to dialysis services to radiology services as well. We have 24 hour radiology services, 24 hour laboratory services. We also have an intensive care unit with our cardiac intensive care units our pediatric intensive care units, and also our adults' main intensive care units. We'll be happy to attend to your needs. Um, you, you, you will be happy to attend to your needs. You don't need to go far. Such as International Hospital is here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm just going to leave this leave this for, for a question. So we'll be doing something. I, I did promise um, at the beginning of the meeting that um, we'll be having a question and answer session. So this question and answer session would be for our uh, um, question and answer session would be for the participant that can, that's his fastest fingers first. <laughs> so the person that can say the first three, that's the first three or any three really, three health tips or key areas that we should focus on in maintaining healthy habits and in lifestyle management. First person that can say that, um, you can put your answers on the chat box. We'll be winning, um, we'll be winning a free health check at Dutchess International Hospital. Oh, wow. So I, I can see that. Okay. So, so I can see that's, that's from um, Zoom. So I can see that we have a winner on the Zoom. So I can see um, nutrition, sleep, and exercise. So I'm just going to scroll down <laughs> and check all the questions. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to scroll up. Okay, nutrition, sleep, and exercise. And that came in at 12.40 p.m. So our winner here, our winner here is Mrs. Oparinde, nutrition, sleep, and exercise. So congratulations, Ma. Um, you have won a free health check at Dutchess International Hospital. Um, that's um. Yes, you want a free health check at Dutchess International Hospital. So a round of applause for Mrs. Oparinde. We'll be happy to receive you and happy to cater to your needs. All right. So I'll be asking, answering some of the questions. I can see that on Zoom, we have some questions in the chat box. So I'll be scrolling up some of the questions. So for some of us that still have questions, please let us feel free to drop our questions in the chat box. So I can see from the first question, it says, I had my comprehensive test in 2022 at Dutchess Hospital. I had another comprehensive this week in Abuja, and I was told that I need to undergo a colonoscopy. What do I need to do? We'll be happy to um, receive you, sir. We'll be happy to follow oh, up with the colonoscopy test. 
Um, um, we usually yeah. advise our clients above the age of 50 to have a colonoscopy done to screen for colon cancer. Um, we have the facilities to for colon cancer, um, for colonoscopies here. It's something that we do regularly. And not just for our clients above the age of 50, for anybody that has a family history of colon cancer, we usually yeah. advise them to start screening at least 10 years before the age of diagnosis of their closest relative. Then for anybody that has symptoms as well, um, blood in the stool and some other symptoms, so we'll be happy to have you, sir, then also happy to um, book the appointment. Then I'm looking at, okay, what are the... <laughs> All right, so you're, you're, you're welcome. So, so I'm looking at the second question. What are the advantages of the VIP checkup that you spend two to three days in the hospital and what are the indicated costs? So for our VIP checkup, that's um, our real medical checkup. It's a three-day plan that involves, um, apart from excellence in healthcare, it involves intensive screening for um, conditions, for ailments, and it also provides not just um, access to screening as well, access to specialists as the, as the need arises. So we also do a top-to-bottom approach for that particular plan. It involves a two-night stay in Dutchess Hospital, which includes a sleep study as well, and also include some other tests as well. So it can be very detailed, but I'll be happy to get your details uh, so that I can um, speak to you about the plan, what it would entail, then also um, assist with booking an appointment. There. Thank you very much. So I hope I've been able to answer your question. All right. So any more questions from our audience? Any more questions? I'd be happy to answer any questions. We still have about a few more minutes on the clock. So I'd be happy to answer your questions. Oh, all right, so thank you. All right, so thank you very much. So we'll be glad to have you come in for the colonoscopy. Um, but for this question, all right, so I, I would usually advise for blood pressure that's elevated, what I usually advise for that is to I'd advise um, that you come in so that you see one of our primary care physicians so that they can help with the blood pressure. Um, although lifestyle management is a key component of um, controlling hypertension or controlling other cardiovascular disease, we also start looking at the points where medication might assist further with controlling that. So although exercise is good, exercise helps with blood pressure control, we start looking at the points where, is it at the points where medication would control it? And that is usually dependent on the individual, um, the level of the blood pressure control, whether there are other um, underlying ailments such as diabetes, chronic kidney failure, or cardiovascular disease. So that, that, that would then help. So I'll be happy. So anybody that has the same concern with blood pressure would be happy to receive you in Dutchess Hospital. We'll be happy to address your needs. We have doctors on ground. We have facilities on ground, not just to treat blood um, hypertension, but also to treat its complications as well. We have uh, cardiologists on ground, nephrologists on ground that will be happy to attend to your needs. Right. I hope I've been able to answer that question. So. All right, so, so the sleep technology is the is the worry. So I, I don't know if I've gotten that, the sleep technology. I, I don't know if that question is about our sleep study program. Um, what we've noticed for a lot of clients is that a lot of Nigerians actually, is that they tend to have um, obstructive, a lot of them have been discovered to have sleep issues as a result of obstructive sleep apnea. And obstructive sleep apnea, if not treated in people, could lead to secondary hypertension. So a lot of people are hypertensive, not because it's essential hypertension that came from somewhere. It's as a result of sleep conditions. So that's why we have a sleep study program for our clients, for those that need it, in which we evaluate, check if they have uh, sleep-related concerns, and address that. And um, we'd also check whether they need to have a machine for the CPAP machine that treat that. But we'll be happy to do that. So if please feel free to book an appointment with us. Um, our website is www.dutcheshospital.com. Then if you want to book a wellness check, it's wellness at dutcheshospital.com. Then our phone number as well for the wellness center is 090-5693-2522 for those of us that want to book appointments. Right. 
So I can say, must wellness tests be annual? For the wellness tests, there are some certain tests that should be annual. And there are some certain tests that you do at a particular point in time. What I usually advise for most of our clients is to have their annual physicals, is to have it annual, because then it would help us follow them up. We've had a lot of patients that come in and the previous year they're fine. And you just check the next year and you see that maybe there's some chronic kidney failure or maybe there's some something that has developed along just within one year. So it's important for a wellness test to be annual. It's the same way we service our cars, um, maybe once a year or every six months. So yes, wellness tests should be annual. Might end up not doing some certain tests annually, um, like a colonoscopy. But then yes, wellness tests should be annual. Oh, all right, so we'll be happy to receive you, sir, for the Royal Medical Checkup. All right, can I talk more on, all right, now I'll be happy to talk more on sleep, um, sleep hygiene. I'll be too happy to talk more on sleep hygiene. Well, um, sleep hygiene um, involves science back techniques that usually, um, <laughs> sleep hygiene involves science back techniques that usually improve um, sleep quality. Um, what sleep hygiene involves is, so many points. One of them is that you shouldn't um, have a television in your room. So your bedroom should be for sleep and sleep alone. Should avoid drinking coffee at least eight hours, six to eight hours before bedtime, because it tends to stay in the system and, avoid, and, and affect sleep. Then you should avoid late night meals. Those could affect sleep as well. Then you should also, when sleeping, take a cold shower before sleeping, um, keep the um, blinds drawn so you're in a dark cool room so that helps improve sleep then exercise but the exercise should not be too close to sleep time because that could um, affect sleep as well so you should exercise during the daytime exercising during the daytime would then um, improve the sleep that you have at night then you should avoid having devices around um, something that the devices tend to do is that they tend to emit blue lights, which could affect the what we call the circadian region. That's the sleep-wake cycle. It tends to affect that and um, disrupts that pattern, which tends to lead to sleeplessness. So we usually advise anybody that um, wants to perfect sleep hygiene to keep away um, devices. And there are some other things as well. So I'll be glad to share them um, via email and speak more about sleep hygiene. All right, sir. So I can see, okay, the next question, I'm a wheelchair user, how can I avoid? So I guess that's the sedentary lifestyle. So it, it, it could be, there, there are different forms of exercise in which wheelchair, um, that wheelchair users could, could, could use. There are different forms. It also depends on the level of injury and also on, um, on the functionality, for instance. For some of our wheelchair users that tend to still have use of their arms, we still advise for some of them, we still advise, um, apart from physiotherapy, physical therapy that would help in strengthening the muscles, strengthening the muscle groups. Um, we also um, advise as well, they could also do muscle strengthening exercises that would assist with building the core muscles. Um, that could be lifted minute weights. Then you also have a, a particular wheel. I've seen that that one can use to exercise the biceps. So it's a wheel that goes around for some of our elderly patients that use it. So it could help with exercising the upper arms and also exercising the um, upper arms and, and the chest as well. So for wheelchair users, there could be some exercises that depending on the function, um, would also be happy to assist you as well with a physiotherapy assessment and a fitness assessment. So our um, physiotherapist in-house would help with an exercise regime, regimen that would best suit your individual needs. I hope I've answered the question, sir. <laughs> All right, so, so the next question, why can't um, Rupa cover the royal um, checkup? I, I'm, I'm wondering as well. <laughs> I will be glad to um, speak with the management and see if there's anything that um, we could work up or anything that we could um, possibly um, discuss so that we'll follow up on this. So I'll just um, take a note about this. Right. Okay, so I can see the last question, sir. Um, all right, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mark. And the last, the last question. 
Does Duchess offer procedures that get rid of skin moves, maybe surgically? Yes, definitely. Um, the Duchess Hospital is a one-stop shop. So most of the specialties that you need, you'll find it in Duchess Hospital, and that includes the services of a dermatologist. So we have a dermatologist that will be happy to assist with um, skin moles. That's that's her area of specialty, whether it's a benign skin mole or whether it's a malignant skin mole, be happy to assist with that. All right. So um, I don't know if we have, I'll be happy to answer um, one or two last questions. Okay, how does family history affect the risk of blood pressure? All right. Um, for family history, the thing about hypertensive and a lot of cardiovascular diseases is that they tend to be multifactorial. So for family history, there tends to be there. Okay. So for hypertension, there are different risk factors that lead to developing hypertension. We have the factors that are factors that we can't do anything about. The factors that are, yes, we can't do anything about those factors. Then we have the factors that we can do something about. But the factors that we cannot do anything about, one of them is family history. Um, over the years, they've seen that if over the years they've seen that there's a genetic component to developing hypertension, and that could be a fact from the innate genetic um, genetic predisposition to developing hypertension. It could also be as a result of habits as well. Habits tend to be transgenerational. And there are some certain conditions that are transgenerational that could also lead to developing hypertension later on in life. One of them is obesity. If there's a family history of being obese, there's an increased chance of being hypertensive. Then another one is sedentary. If there's a family um, history of being sedentary or not being very particular, particularly healthy, there's also an increased chance of being hypertensive. Then you also have some other hereditary conditions that lead to developing secondary um, hypertension as well later on in life. For instance, there's a particular um, condition called adult polycystic kidney disease um, that that's tends to travel down in families. It's quite um, dominant. So if there's a history of that, there's a history of developing hypertension as a result of that particular ailment. So that's how family history affects the risk of um, being hypertensive. It could be via genetics, it could be via inherited habits, it could also be via inherited disease as well. Right. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Sir. Lovely presentation, thank you, sir. So I think um, that, that's about all. I don't know if anybody else um, has any questions, so we'll just take one last question. Any question? Any more questions? We'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, so I'm just going to um, tap in the chat box, but that would be here. So I'm just, okay. Thank you very much, sir. So I'm just going to type um, the email address, so I'll leave it in the chat box. That's the website of Duchess Hospital. Then for those of us that want to book um, wellness checks, we'll be happy to receive you. So I'm just typing the um, email address of the wellness center. So for those of us that want to book, um, for those of us that want to book medical checkups, we'll be happy to receive you. We'll be happy to um we'd we'll be happy to address your needs we'd we'll also be happy to work with you on maintaining healthy life habits and also happy to work with you on lifestyle management okay great so i think that's all we'll be able to take today my my apologies um it's 101 on on the dot so because of um Yes, my apologies, it's 101 on the dot. So we'd have to end the presentation at this time. Um, I'll be happy to answer any question um, you might have. Um, so please feel free to um, send your details as well to wellness at duchesshospital.com. Then I know that for some of our clients, oh, okay. So I know that for some of our clients that uh, want to book health checks, um, we'll be happy to receive you. Then I know some of our clients are in this email and I can see your questions as well. So I'm going to take um pen them down.
so that we'll be happy to address them and address your concerns as well. So we're happy to serve you. Thank you very much. So please do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Don't pass it.